And now the follow-up. Did you have any talent who sort of pushed back and said, Jeff, if you can't pay me blank, I, uh, blank, I ain't coming in. You know, even Scott, and he was always a personal friend of mine. I don't even recall any of that. Hey, man, dude, it's cool. Um, Shamrock was definitely didn't have all of his eggs in the TNA basket and he was disappointed, but understood, but no, there wasn't anybody that like, no, I mean, it just, it was a different time because again, to put it back in full context. And I know Conrad, you were uh, an avid watcher. And I think even the, the consumer and the viewer and all of that, when Vince bought the competition, it was very apparent to the whole wrestling world, even to the, the, the buy rates, the invasion was big. And then it died. It, it, there was, you can't be number one without a number two. There, there's no such thing as that you're just wrestling. So we had a lot of built in, man, I hope they make it type stuff. Yes, you did. You have a lot of goodwill with a lot of people within the industry because they understood the bigger issue was a lot of jobs left. And if we can get back some of those jobs in wrestling, that's good for the whole industry and certainly good for fans. But I also know that, you know, there has always been this sentiment that, you know, and, and, and we'll talk about when it became, or actually maybe now's a good time, I guess. When do you remember every, I should say everything, the overwhelming majority of the online feedback, because you do go from being this you know, bell at the ball, you're the darling, you're the Cinderella story, you're the underdog, and we're all pulling for you. And then one day it feels like I log on and it's, oh, LOL, TNA. And I could never really put my finger on why that is because you look at all the stuff y'all created and, man, there's such great, there really is great stuff out there. And you look at all the opportunity that was created for a lot of guys who maybe wouldn't have had those same opportunities otherwise. I was a big proponent, big fan, still am. And for a lot of the same reasons you just laid out, we wanted that competition. We wanted that number two, but eventually that whole LOL TNA thing gained more and more steam. And it felt like, I don't know, the majority of the fans that sort of turned their back. Do you know when you felt like that was the case? For sure. <laughs> I, I really do. And, and, and the reason being, uh, and you know, my history but, you know, pulling back the, the, the layers of the onion and you actually, okay, so audio viewers, when Conrad, when I just responded to Conrad and says, yeah, I know I do, he sort of looked at me a little bit surprised. But if you know my history in depth, and I, uh, again, pulling back the layers of the onion, in 2013, I spent 11 out of the 12 months trying to buy back majority control. So I, I, I had to think about not just financial but everything that goes with it. But the first couple of years were really tough. And no matter who it was, and, and even, I mean, we had a core, passionate, rabid fan base. But we probably had more people waiting for our demise. It's just society. It's just how it goes. Oh, they're going out of business. We were going out of business next week for a good I don't know, 24, 36 months. I mean, yeah. that. but it began to sort of change Fox sports net wasn't a great time slot, but oh, wow. So they're, they've got this and hmm, that's interesting and monthly pay-per-views and, you know, just little by little. Then of course the spike deal, it, it just, the trajectory of the company, even, you know, in my opinion, the online, um, uh, buzz and chatter was, very, very positive. Did we hit it out of the cup uh, park every week? No, not at all. But it was a consistent build, 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 build. But when we essentially nuked the brand, uh, took away the six-sided ring, went from TNA to Impact, uh, Hogan was the face of the brand in every shape, form, or fashion. That is a WWE retread. You know, uh, we could go all the way down the line. But in 2010, toward the end of the year, the amount of people that would come up to me that would, whether it was, was there at, at live events, whether they were fans, executives, building managers, it was kind of amazing to see 
so do the pot shots they began to take in person. Like, oh, wow. Okay. But then, so, so I'm going to say once we didn't give the TNA faithful or the TNA fan some type of rebuttal because there's give and take, but when we just completely dismissed the TNA fan that had been with us from 2002 up through 2010, then it flipped because then they were just the pot shot, the naysayers, the people that were waiting for our demise. Uh, I'll say candidly, the Hogan haters, all of that. Once we gave the other side, um, the real platform and the TNA faithful didn't have anything down to the six sided ring down to AJ styles, you know, then he was a Ric Flair, you know, that whole thing, just storyline after storyline, after storyline that literally spit in the face of TNA. It became the joke. The run in L O, like you said, TNA L O L. So let's talk about Vince Russo. I had that exact conversation with potential investors and different folks multiple times in 2013, and they understood that. Let's talk about Russo back here at the beginning of uh, TNA. You just signed him to a hundred thousand dollar a year contract to do creative. And then not too long after that, you realize, wait a minute, we don't have the budget we had. Were you having conversations with Russo about that? I mean, part of me thinks somebody on your side had to say, Jeff, given our new financial landscape, this is a bad deal. And there, I mean, there, you know, you said signed and I get it. That's a newsletter, but it was an agreement. Hey, we're going to pay you this. Uh, but there wasn't anybody in the company, including myself that didn't agree to a pay cut. It, it was what it was uh, across the board. We were, you know, we buckled down and said, um, uh, you know, whatever, you know, I don't say su survival mode, but, but, but we're going to make the right business decisions. And so nobody, including Vince, including myself, everyone said, okay, let, let's, let's figure out. We got to do what we got to do. Let's talk about, uh, something in your dad's book. It says on July 19th, you and Jerry reached out to health South to let them know the news regarding the flash reports and the change in budget. How do you remember this call going where you're, you're catching up your partner, Richard Scrooge here on uh, what's happening. And we're probably going to run into this a couple of times today, Conrad, but that conversation, my father was not a part of it. It was me and the accountant. Uh, who's still with me to this day, but, um, and Richard was not a part of the call. Remember Richard, we didn't know it at the time, but still he was CEO of a, one of the 10 largest, uh, corporations in the world or in America, whatever it was huge. So Richard wasn't a part of the call, but the financial folks were, I think there was two or three, we'll call them junior finance folks. Uh, and then, uh, uh, one of the lead guys and, it was set up uh, from the very beginning that on Friday morning we would get our draws. I can't remember. Uh, we've talked about this. Was it every other Friday or every Friday? But my accountant, the 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 uh, J Sports and Entertainment financial folks uh, that we had set up, um, you know, they did a draw sheet. Um, do I need to explain what a draw sheet is, Conrad? That's pretty. Yes. Cool. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, it, it, it's the expenses, and we had to submit that. Uh, to hell south and here's the draw sheet so we told them hey we're going to have a call we're going to talk more about the draw sheet so we set up the call and explained and and that was almost like uh, you know uh, a foreign language as we were going into jay and the flash reports and what's going on but we explained it to them and um i can't say that it went great or it went horrible, but it was a factual call that this is what we're dealing with, but uh, we are working our ass off to get our head around what our revenues are. And that was the call. 